I've got 25 pro tips that I've personally used in the past and that you can immediately implement before or during your next ring session. Save this video so you don't forget. All right, listen up. I'm No End, a former competitive Rainbow Six Siege player, and I started out as a total noob just like everyone else. Through the years and through my competitive experience, I learned a ton of pro tips that helped me dominate lobbies. These tips will augment your playmaking by clearing up your intel, streamlining your decision making, and boosting your gunfight confidence. You ready? Let's do this. Tip number one. Turn on night mode in your audio settings to hear quiet audio better. Extra quiet footsteps will become louder and extra loud noises, like gunshots and explosions, will be reduced to much more reasonable levels. This helps me hear and punish those pesky crouch walkers. Tip number two, switch off of automatic aspect ratio and experiment with stretched ratios. While mostly personal preference, in a game like Siege, stretched resolutions will widen the horizontal part of character hitboxes at the cost of making them run across your screen slightly faster. Since I transitioned from flex to entry frag, I made the switch from 16 to nine, to 16x10, and finally 4x3, since I found that my gun skill improved when stretching my resolution. I may make a detailed aspect ratio and FOV guide if there's interest. Speaking of FOV, tip number three, change your FOV from the 60 default to anywhere between 80 and 90 FOV. This FOV range is generally accepted as the most optimal for having the decent amount of peripheral vision and gunfight zoom. But if you want to experiment with FOVs in the 70s range, that can also work. 60 FOV is generally too zoomed in. I personally use 80 FOV so that I'm not required to use 1.5 times scopes. I feel comfortable on 1x scopes too. Again, I can make a dedicated guide if there's interest. Tip number four, optimize your gadget settings. Turn on advanced gadget deployment to avoid being stuck in animations. Turn on advanced drone deployment and manual drone after prep phase options to let you choose when to hop on thrown drones. Minimizing your deaths to runouts and letting you stay on drone for your teammates immediately after the prep phase respectively. Helping to stop pesky spawn peekers. In my experience, if a teammate stayed on drone for a crucial area of the map, then I as an entry could rush to take that map control. Also, know your team colors in accessibility settings. Your teammates' gadgets and the enemy team's gadgets will correspond to these colors. You can quickly determine if a gadget or cam belongs to your team, so you have a better read on the situation. Tip number five, turn on at least medium shadows to see dynamic shadows. There are some spots in Siege, like Clubhouse Garage Door, where the map lighting will give away an attacker's location through dynamic shadows. Always keep shadows on at least medium to ensure that you don't miss out on free intel at these areas. Tip number six, turn off screen shake feedback. Siege is an intense game, so minimizing distractions in high pressure situations will help, especially if multiple breaches or explosions are being initiated around you. Tip number seven, if you struggle in gunfights, consider lowering your sensitivity. Many of the ranked gunners and competitive entries that use higher sensitivities have to aim train more in order to maintain their mouse control. I used to aim train religiously during my comp career, so I experimented with a variety of sensitivities and found that for me, a medium to high sense range works best. A lower sense works better for players who don't have highly precise wrist mechanics or who don't aim train frequently. So if you're in that boat, consider a lower sensitivity for instant results. I'll make a detailed sensitivity guide in the future if there's interest. Tip number eight, learn head height crosshair placement. On level ground, head height is the same as the upper buckle height on door barricades. Prepping your crosshair allows you to end fights instantly with one bullet, which will lead you to winning more gunfights rather than just relying on body shots. So learn that buckle height. Tip number nine, double melee barricades to prep runouts. Having window or door runouts prepped as a defender allows for active playmaking on attackers outside the building based on your intel. Also, you can double hit barricades with no sound by shooting out a panel on the sides and double meleeing the yellow strip silently. This allows you to go for runouts mid-round without warning the attackers. Tip number 10, break glass on windows to hear sound on the other side. This is helpful to prevent dying to quick window plays. You can also do this before placing castle barricades to hear when breach charges are being placed. On defender positions like roaming cocktail on a reading cafe defense, having audio on the window repels is crucial. Tip number 11, learn to quickly peek barricaded windows without breaking the glass. 
Either shoot a side panel at an angle or melee the barricade at the perfect distance to avoid breaking the glass. Attackers will have minimal warning that the window is broken, which will lead to free kills. Also, you can shoot the glass through the barricaded window in order to shatter it and make it harder for enemies to see your head popping through the window. Tip number 12. When fully opening barricades, shoot half a magazine and reload behind cover before opening the rest. This is super important after the reload rework, as aggressive defenders can run out on you while reloading, so make sure to take cover mid-animation. Tip number 13. You can silently enter barricades with every operator. Just melee underneath the X of the barricade and the panel below that in order to get a perfect crouch size hole. For an extra sneak factor, you can use Maverick's blowtorch to break the same panels without the melee noise. Tip number 14. Make multiple punch holes instead of just one to avoid getting pre-fired. If an enemy is going to swing on your punch hole, having multiple to play off of will confuse them and swing the gunfight in your favor. This is useful in positions like Clubhouse Blue Generator, since if a defender in blue is left unchallenged, attackers cannot safely walk into church from Moto. Tip number 15. Repeat after me. Never plant the diffuser on a soft hatch. Defenders can break the hatch and instantly break the diffuser. Tip number 16. DMRs can break soft hatches. Don't waste an explosive if a DMR is on your team. Save your team's Gon 6s, Ash charges, Zofia charges, frag grenades for more important utility or kills, and let the DMRs get the hatch. Tip number 17. Slug shotguns can break soft hatches in just one or two shots. Simply prone and shoot the cross section of the hatch to break the wooden beams. Any slug shotgun can do this, including the TCSG, the ACS 12, and even the Boss G. Quick bonus tip, this also helps to open hatches with the Bailiff secondary. Tip number 18, mask loud drop noises by shooting your gun. Normally, an enemy will be alerted to your exact position as you make a dropping noise. However, by shooting right as you drop, you can mask the drop sound with louder gunfire. In my experience, it's hard to determine an enemy's exact position based off of a single shot. The sound could have came through a hatch for instance especially when you compare it to a drop sound, which must mean a player landed on a surface from a higher elevation. You can use this to make aggressive plays and hit sights from the hatches or ledges. Tip number 19. Learn how to cook frag grenades at 7 meters for vertical kills. You can either time off of the knuckle twitch or off the blinking of the crosshair. In the first case, wait a little after the right knuckle twitches, and in the second case, throw when the crosshair reaches the fastest blink phase. If you have an Intel Defender through a drone or a Yana clone, you will be able to consistently punish them with a Vert Nade. You can also Vert Nade common Defender anchor spots like Vault on Villa without explicit Intel, although I advise against using more than one Nade without Intel. Tip number 20. Metal beams go in the opposite direction of floorboards. So if you're doing Vert with any shotgun or with Buck, knowing this will enable you to quickly open Vert angles quicker conserve your ammo, and avoid nitro cells better. You can even do vert from two floors above easier with this knowledge, completely negating nitro cells as buck. Tip number 21. Take space when opportunities arise. If a room is droned and it's clear, take it. If a defender gives up a room, take it. After shooting a drone or if an attacker missed drones, catch the attacker off guard with a cheeky reposition or by sitting in a rat spot. This is extra useful on the defenders with drone interactions like Solus, Mute, Mozzie, and Vigil. I quickly learned this habit on the entry frag and roaming rules. Take advantage of the enemy's mistakes, and you will find opportunities to punish them. Tip number 22. Don't full sprint unless you're safe. You can sprint to quickly take control of multiple areas that were droned. However, you should otherwise avoid sprinting. As an entry, I needed to be gun up in every potential engagement. Without info or in congested areas, it's much better to normal walk or even alt walk around the map while ADSing. Tip number 23, alt walk directly out of a sprint or a normal walk to confuse your enemy in a 1v1 when repositioning. The enemy will not know where you'll peek next due to the lapse in audio information, so you can play mind games in your gunfights. Crouch walk may make similar noise amounts to alt walking, however. Tip number 24, avoid crouching around the map and in your gunfights. Crouching kills your strafe speed and requires a transition to stand up to full speed again. Alt walking is better for moving around quietly in shorter distances, since you'll have quick access to normal speed strafes and there will be no stance change sound. 
If you're trying to mix up your head height based off the enemy's cross replacement, then peeking and angle crouched can sometimes work. If there is interest, I may talk more about it in a dedicated how to peek or movement guide. Tip number 25, practice your quick peeking. For the most basic quick peek, learn how to do a basic AD strafe jiggle or quick peek while staying leaned. You can get the hang of this in a single T hunt. This will give you intel in a face check, either visually or by baiting shots, so you can swing and secure the gunfight with confidence. I'll make a dedicated guide on quick peeking and shiko peeking if there's interest. After implementing these tips, you'll start successfully making more plays. After all, Siege is a first person shooter, first and foremost, centered around playing off of intel. If you paid attention, these tips will augment your available intel, your decision making, and your confidence leading up to your engagements. For me personally, years ago when I focused on improving my playmaking, my random teammates in one of my games actually noticed my capabilities and started inviting me to better stacks. One thing led to another, and looking back on it now, I ended up enjoying my time in the comp scene. For those solo queue warriors out there that are looking to get into rank stats, incorporate these tips and don't be shy when people take notice. Take the opportunities and enjoy the time you spend stacking with others. You never know where these circumstances may lead you. Be sure to click on the video that popped up on screen to see more of my content.